welcome back to another episode of MIDI Designer. And as you may or may not know, I've been uh, working on a graphic user interface to program my DX27. What I've done here is I've spent a lot of time working on programming this thing. Now, I've only gotten so far as to get the four operators done, all the buttons labeled, and all the controls mapped. However, in this process, sometimes you know you have to start and stop, or you get interrupted, or whatever. And as careful as you may be, you're always going to run into missed things, or glitches, or bugs, or anything like that. So it's always important that once you get your thing done, is you test it, you go through each of the functions, and make sure that everything's working properly. Now, I have added a couple of extra features from my last one, which there is a video in, on my channel where I kind of display what the old graphic looked like. And I've done a complete redesign. Some of the controls are the same, but most of them are different, and uh, I've got them laid out differently. So um, the other thing that I've added that the old one did not have was this LFO section. I had to put it on a second page because I ran out of room, but once again, revisions happen and things go differently and my OCD isn't going to settle with me having that one section or any other extra controls on a second page. So what I may end up doing is shrinking down some of these operator controls to a smaller size and seeing if I can fit the LFO section. Um, on this one page just would make life so much easier plus you know trying to get it to fit sym symmetrically and everything like that you know um, there was a lot going on on this uh, on this program and that's why it took me so long to get back to it I mean when I showed you the basics I was still in the beginning and um, this is it, it took some time for me to get it mapped out and everything and I really had a lot going on between you know, the last video and now. And yeah, I've posted a couple of other videos since then because they were just easier to make. But this took a lot of time. There was a lot to keep track of. And, and it can get overwhelming at times, but don't let that discourage you because once you get it right, you'll be rewarded. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some of the controls and test them and see if we can fix any mistakes that, that we come across. Um, I've already messed with two of them off camera. Um, I think I've got most of the controls working properly for operator one, so, and that should be the sound that you're hearing. Okay. Now I'll probably go through things like scaling because they're not like super noticeable on camera, so I might go through those later, but. Okay, there's not a gradual volume control thing going on here. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to double check to see what I've done here. Okay, so I have 0 through 99, which is correct. But I think, yeah, see my MIDI is still set for 0 to 127 and I don't think they're matching up properly and that's why I'm having these issues. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this to 99 for max. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, now, let's check it, see how we do here. That's a little smoother, so. Okay, so we got that um, volume control working properly. The frequency seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I couldn't tell you if the detune works or not. I gotta look. Now these buttons, I think I still have to mess with a little bit. I wanted to set up because there's only three um, scale um, rates or scale levels. I'm not sure which. I wanted to just do up and down, and I didn't get that working properly. So I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more. My algorithm button seems to be working pretty good, or knob, I've gotten that, I did that one off camera, but let's see, number two, that seems to be working pretty good, 
The only one thing I noticed about the DX27 is when you're programming the uh, volume output for an operator, you have to continually hit a note in order to hear the change because if you sit there and change it and hold a note down, you're not going to hear it. So. Okay, now I know these sliders aren't right. I got to go through and get those right. That's some of them, like for instance, if you look at like these um, D1R, D1L, and D2R ones, um, and I even think the re release rate one, <clears throat> the uh, values are backwards in the DX27. So the way I wanted it to work is when you look at the faders, you would see like you would on a fader section for an ASDR for an analog synth. And to my eyes, it just, it more graphically represents the envelope and it makes it a little bit easier to, to, uh, to track that. So, um, I know that in there I have to reverse the control numbers so that, uh, let's see if I can pull one up here. Going under design, let's see. Okay. Let's look at the MIDI on that. Yeah, see here, the MIDI, I have the MIDI minimum is at 31, and the max is, is zero. So that way it'll work in reverse. But if you look at the properties, I have the display ticker showing, you know, zero to 31 proper. So if you were to follow what was going on in the display on the DX27, 31 would be zero and vice versa. And that's okay because this is the graphic representation that I wanted. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier when it comes to programming and it's best to test once you reach a stage where things are done, it's best to test with in front of your, whatever it is that you're trying to control to make sure all your controls work pro properly. Um, and this one was pretty daunting, but again, if this is something that you're into, you'll sit down you'll take the time to do it and you'll make it right. Now, um, once I get all the bugs worked out, I am going to go ahead and post this to the MIDI Designer site. I believe it's mididesigner.com. And if you have a DX27, this will work with your DX27. Now, I've had questions before when I've posted to the Facebook site or the MIDI Designer forum. Will this work with Keyboard X or Keyboard DX in this case? Um, and the answer is no, because it's a SysX address for each command, and each product has a different SysX code. So there's a possibility like the DX100 or the DX21 might work with this, but don't quote me on that. I don't know. I don't have those to try them out. And I do have a Yamaha FB01 tone generator, and it has a different set of, of SysX commands for changing things in there. So I'm probably going to uh, tackle that one somewhere down the road so that I can use it for programming and use it in conjunction with my DX27. Um, now the next time I get the next time I get to a, another episode of MIDI Designer to show you final test and some of the patches and stuff that I'll be creating, um, there is a strong possibility I might redesign the graphic interface again just because I want to get that LFO section on the one page and I might resize some things and I'll have everything fine tuned and all the bugs worked out. So, um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions, do the same. Um, and stay tuned for the next episode of MIDI designer pro. Thanks. <laughs>